Make Block X Tool D1 Laser. Going to set it up in Laser Box. Show you how to set it up in Light Burn. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And in this little short video, I'm going to show you how to configure Laser Box for the Make Block X Tool D1 Laser and get it configured in light burn. It's not very tough. It's actually fairly easy. And for that, I'm going to go up and get on the laptop up in the loft because it's warmer up there. Okay, we're going to start out here by going into light burn. We'll open that up. Now down here where it says devices, click on devices, and I want to import there is a file, a configuration file that I can import that is downloaded from the website. And I just got to find it here. And it'll look like this. So to say Xtool D1 Lightburn Development, that's what that stands for. Just click on Open. and just click OK and you are configured. So you'll want to go over here. I'm not connected to the laser right now. And that'll give you your layout. Get this out of the way over here. And of course with the uh, D1 your origin is the upper left corner. So that's all there is to getting this configured in Lightburn. Not hard. Okay I saw that part of the screen got cut off there. Uh, my first capture so hopefully this will grab it. Now you can see over here on devices there's our Xtool D1. So over here you would click down to that particular laser if you happen to have a lot of lasers. I have five of them. And then you would need to choose which COM port is connected. Of course I'm not connected right now. And right here is where you would check your, your job origin to the upper left corner. Normally I use everything from the lower left corner, so I'll have to remember this stuff. But that's just so you can see the rest of the screen on this. Okay, so now we'll get LaserBox installed. You can download that from the uh, MakeBlock website. And I have that in a folder right here. We'll say LaserBox Basic Win because I'm on a Windows computer. And yeah, we're going to let it do that. Just click install. And it'll launch it. And you need to allow access. So I'm not connected here right now. I'm up in the loft and not down in the shop where the laser is. Okay, and then here you'll see when the screen comes up, you get a maximize there. It'll, up here it'll say not connected. Uh, you'll need to click this little drop down box. Your serial port should appear there. You need to have the laser USB cable plugged in to both the laser and the computer and you need to have the laser turned on. And the serial port should illuminate which, with which serial port you need to go to. And down here, the network settings, I won't be doing network Wi-Fi out here because, well, number one, I don't have Wi-Fi out here and I don't want it out here. I prefer a hard connection to everything when I'm making projects. I can get into why I do that later. But that's all uh, you need to do there. Now I guess it's time to head down into the shop and get this connected to the laser. Okay, I'm connected to the laser now and the laser is on. The USB cable is plugged in. We'll start out up here with LaserBox Basic. Open that up again. Up here it'll say not connected. Once you are connect plugged in under serial port, this should pop up. I'm on COM6. Then you want to go over here to menu and you can check for updates. It'll tell you up there the latest version is already installed and to find out what version you have check for firmware and if it's a brand new laser you'll want to do this especially if you're going to put light the light burn 
package on here because you definitely will want to have this version or later. Okay, and then you can go ahead and proceed with your project. Now we'll go over to Lightburn. Lightburn's my uh, software of choice, mostly because I know how to use it, and it has a lot of uh, more features. So here I'm opening uh, Lightburn up. You need to go down here and pick the right laser. This is the XTool D1, of course, and it'll automatically show up there on COM6. And right up here under laser, it'll say ready. So we're ready to go and ready to load a project and take off with it. So that's all there is to this. It's not really too tough. Some people make it more difficult than it really is. Okay, so that's all there was to it. It's not tough. Uh, the reason I do not have uh, Wi-Fi out here is I don't really need it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I do not like to run my projects over Wi-Fi, and the reason is if there's any kind of little glitch in that Wi-Fi signal, you know, maybe somebody starts a microwave or somebody's got running a, an engine without suppression on the ignition, it'll disrupt that Wi-Fi. If you've ever for, uh, been printing something on a printer and you're wanting to do it in a very high resolution and you get lines in it and you're printing it over Wi-Fi and you know the heads are clean on the printer or you know you have a good laser uh, printer, you know, what's causing this? It's an interruption that drops packets and that causes lines. Uh, especially when I'm doing graphics on, for example, on my sublimation printer, I never use a network. It's always a direct connection to the computer over the USB cable. That way I never have them little lines appear. And the same thing can happen when you're doing laser engraving. If you're doing it over Wi-Fi and it drops some packets, you'll get some skips, lines. It, no reason to take the chance to ruin your project. I always direct connect. Uh, so, and I don't operate things off my phone. I don't like my phone anyway. And a bunch of young people are saying, oh, how can that be? Well, anyway, getting back to the laser, uh, that's all there is for the configuration. I did do a couple of uh, test burns and a couple of test cuts with it. I don't normally cut things out with my laser, but I uh, wanted to see how well it would work. So there's the blank, and well, there's like one of the stars. So this is a three and a half millimeter birch plywood. Cut it on one pass at uh, five millimeters per second and 100% power, I believe is what the setting was. And there are some drop downs in laser box or you can choose your material, but not a whole lot of choices. Uh, I also did a couple of uh, test engravings on wood because that's what I primarily use these for is wood and ceramic tile. Did one here on cedar and it worked very well. And as you can see here, as it's engraving, it actually kind of blows the smoke right out of the way. I think air assist would be a plus because I did get a little scorching around the edges here and had to do a little bit of sanding. But uh, as you can see here, it does just kind of blow the smoke away. So the fan that's blowing down through the head does evacuate the smoke. And air assist would still be a plus. I also did one on pine. And with the same type of thing, I had a lot of uh, scorching where the smoke and everything was kind of blowing this direction as it blew out from under the head. So it took just a light sanding, but it, it wasn't much. I think air assist would take care of that. It did on my other lasers. Then I did uh, a little thing on a piece of, uh, this is actually floor underlayment for tile. It's, it's wood. It's kind of a, kind of a birch on here. But... I did a little thing to test some text. I did a little uh, graphic over here. Then I did a little thing here to test just to see how fine of a line it would engrave. And it, I'm very impressed with that. So once I get this thing uh, set up, i got to build a baseboard for it and get it all set up in its more or less permanent location. Put a spoil board underneath with a grid. So I like working off a grid for lining things up. We'll do some more testing and I'll do some more demonstrations. Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop. Hope you got something out of that. If you did, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.